Hey guys, Bundy here. Hey, I just want to show you guys today um, one thing that happens quite a bit with tensioners. This is a tensioner off the Honda J Series engine. Let's see, I had an extra one sitting around here somewhere. Now well, let's go over the one that's on this engine. Okay, so here sits the tensioner right there, right? This is a tensioner. <clears throat> and those pulleys, those black pulleys, are what sits on it. So this, uh, what happens typically is the bearings inside the pulleys themselves, they actually go bad. Not this, there's a big spring that sits inside of here. That spring rarely, rarely ever fails. So what you can do, these, these tensioners are not cheap. They're not cheap at all. But the bearings for the uh, pulleys themselves cost me probably about 20 bucks. So what I'll do is I'll take the pulleys off, punch the bearings out, and then put new bearings in and put everything back together. Because I think for this tensioner, they wanted 100 bucks if not more but uh, the key thing to remember on this is that this upper one is actually reverse threaded so it's what is it usually righty tighty lefty loosey but since it's reverse threaded it's righty loosey so I'm actually turning it clockwise and it's coming out so this one is reverse threaded and there's a nut on the back side too that holds it in place Let's see if I can get it out There's a nut. So it stays in place here. There's a little hexagon back there. That holds it in place. But just make note of that when you're taking off the pulley. And it can actually be really, really tight on there. So just be careful. This one's regular. Righty tighty, lefty loosey. Righty loosey, lefty tighty. So this is the old bearing that came out of it. Um, let's see if I can find the number. PRC 6203-2RS, and 2RS just stands for two seals. And then the next number is JB-ZXZ. So I replaced the bearing on this one, which is this old one right here. And I also marked which one was top. You can see there. But these two bearings are actually exactly the same. Um, even though they're different colors, they're the same. That one came out of there. That one's still in there. And the number that I use on these bearings, and just make sure you check. Um, you don't want to check the inner width and the outer width, and then how wide it is when ordering bearings. But these bearings are SKF. Part number for this one is 62032RSJEM, made in Argentina. Pick these up from a local bearing bearing distributor here in and it's in Colton. I'll put a link up to it right now. Good guys over there. So what you do to get these out is you get a socket about the same size as the bearing. And then you get a hammer and you punch them out. Sometimes there's a lip on one side, but these don't. They just kind of sit in there flush. So I would actually I can do it, actually do it here right now. So line that up. I'll put it over where the leg sits. I'm going to take one quick whack. Let's see if I can do this with one hand. I probably didn't do anything. Actually, I'm going to bust out this way. Let me change over to my right hand. It's probably better if you do this on the ground. All right, I'm going to do this on the ground. Well, it moved a little bit. This socket is... A 30 millimeter socket. Okay, it's out. This bearing is not as bad as the other one. Let's grab the other one. This one sounds awful.
So then you just take your new bearing. I will get some uh, grease and line the outside of the bearing, line the inside here, and just punch it back in. And then uh, once it gets close to this slip right here, I'll take the socket, move it sideways, and if it goes a little bit too far in, I'll just I'll just uh, pound it back in so that it's flush. Like this one here, you can see that's flush. And how I did that, like I said, I just took the socket. If it came out a little bit, I just tap it back in with a hammer in the socket. So there you go, guys. That's how you can save some money on um, expensive tensioners. Like I said, the spring inside doesn't go bad usually. It's the bearings that fail. So why not just replace the bearings? And I'll get a uh, steel wool brush and get all this junk off of it as well. Put a new belt on. But uh, there you go, guys. You can save some money by not replacing the tensioner, but just replacing the bearings. All right, guys, you have a good one, and happy New Year's, man. 2020, crazy. Take care. One thing to note on the bottom part of the tensioner, you have this lip right here, okay? So that means that this, this bearing kind of rides right here. So this bearing needs to be a little bit farther out on the back side. You can see I push it out right there. Because when you put it on, it has to ride just a little bit above the tensioner right there. You can see the gap, right? So it's best to do the bottom one sticking out, the bearing sticking out a little bit farther than the lip so that you don't come into contact with the tensioner itself. So just make note of that. I just discovered that putting everything back together. So make the bottom bearing stick out a little bit farther on the back side and you should be good to go. Alexa, what's the best car repair channel on YouTube? Bunny's Garage is the best car repair video channel on YouTube. Alexa, who do you love most? I love Bunny's Garage.